Okay, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I just ended up looking at this. Um, so the plan was to do a stream, but I went through the game spot one and realized this presentation only goes for like 10 minutes. So there was no point on the stream for 10 minutes. So I'll just have to do it the old fashioned way. Um, nice video format like this. So um, I don't know how the sound's going to go. I don't know how it's going to sound because I don't I don't get all the, the web um, browser set up. Properly, so let's see how we go. In a way, it doesn't matter because I'm going to pause it when I talk in a way, so yeah, let's get started. Hopefully, it's decent. Let's um push it ahead a bit. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. Guys, I really don't give a shit about looking at the PlayStation 5, the original. Everyone knows it's hardware. Everyone knows what it's got and what it doesn't. I don't know why the point they're doing it. I'm assuming they're doing it to compare the PlayStation 5 Pro to the PlayStation 5. Which is a good way of doing it. I mean, it's better than comparing to your competition. Of course, competition's always doing different. Like, Nintendo's doing it a different way. Well, Xbox isn't really, to be honest, they're doing this very similar, the same thing as PlayStation. So, anyway, Nintendo and Nvidia and all, that, all the others are doing their own little thing, so, which is great. So, yeah, I'm getting excited about it, but I, I hear it's pricey. So, um, also, guys, you might hear my mobile phone go off. I've got a lot of things going on, so... When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds. So guys, back then, the Zen 2 architecture was, was relatively new. It wasn't new, new, but relatively. It was, I think it was a few years, might be a few years. Now, the Sen 2 is considered ancient because it, we're up to Sen 5, I believe. So, I actually did a um, podcast on this very channel, the last podcast, um, going through the, the PlayStation um, hardware and all that shit. So, yeah, I just want to point that out. And frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has. Sometimes I've seen a lot of games running at 30 frames, so. I mean, 60, I think, is a normal one, but yeah, I don't I don't believe too much about the 120 frames to, per second. Unless it's for certain games like Fortnite and all that I kind of stuff, yeah, I would believe it, but they're not really graphically intense. But yeah, for the most part, I think they're closer to 60 to 30. It's a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. 
Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run 60 frames per second, mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can yeah, be um, achieved. Every gamer knows that, guys. Everyone knows games. Performance mode is basically just for um, more F um, FTP or FPS, whatever you want to call it. And the other one is just basically an um, quality, extra quality with slower frame rates per second. That's about it. Everyone, I think everyone gaming knows that. I'm not sure what he's going on about it. So maybe from non gamers, which would probably make sense, I guess. But I think most people who are watching this are gamers, so I don't think it's necessary. But let's get going. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision or at least narrowing that divide is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to. Well, I'm glad this is like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. So I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm not trying to be mean to anyone, but I think this is fucking boring. I mean, a lot of people with a bit more energy, like, you know, back in the day with um, Steve Jobs and all that, this guy is just so boring, it's... I'm falling asleep. I am really falling asleep, guys. So I do apologize, but I can't. I have trouble watching this myself. If it's not entertaining, this guy's definitely not entertaining. He's probably good at what he does, but doing this is not one of them. At the high frame rates the players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. All right, finally, we're getting to the point. It took him like five or six minutes to get here, but we got there. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. Right news. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzed. Basically, it's like um, every, every other company's got their own name for this type of thing. AMD's got one for them, NVIDIA, and now um, Sony, even though Sony's running on AMD, so technically it's more about AMD stuff, but I'm assuming this is extra stuff they added on top of it. Which in the day, I don't think it's a good idea to sort of slow it down more. That's my personal opinion. ...sizes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5... Pro it's what, guys, it's what I call that. I call it fake graphics. Because it's not technically real graphics, it's AI just trying to fill in the spots. That's technically what it is. I know I call it fake graphics because it's not true graphics, guys. Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing. With graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part 2 running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore yeah, you, much you can, choppier. You can definitely tell the difference between them. The PlayStation Pro is doing better, but I don't, how do we know it's PlayStation Pro though, guys? Here's the thing, I'm pretty sure this game's on Steam as well from Sony, so um, how do we know they're not using a PC and just saying it's better than what it is? I don't trust companies, guys. This not just Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, and all those companies that just aren't trustworthy. But it's a good possibility if this is the case. Um, that's definitely an improvement. Don't stop. We gotta lose. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rate has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. 
And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. Sort of, I don't know. I noticed so some that doesn't look, look as good. remarkable improvement to the games. I should have that. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jar of Sorters. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars yeah, and gameplay. It'll be good for games like that. While continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy. Allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Yeah, it's just a simply a little put, bit of technology. It's the most well, powerful. Sorry guys, just a little bit of technology, but not really telling us exactly what's in it. Which I kind of guess I understand because they need to be a bit more open to the masses because not everyone's going to understand the jargon. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I know a bit of hardware, so. Console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never break a legend. I gotta say though, the PlayStation 5 Pro looks really good though. I, I gotta give it the sign. It looks really good. I, now, it's been guys. Actually, I'll tell you this at the end because we're nearly there. Uh, don't let me hang it. What are you doing? Stop attacking my paper! Oh. Alrighty guys, there's the price. Now, I don't know how much that is. It's, it's, I believe it's in American. So, I'll have to convert that. We'll convert that in a minute. So, um, is that it? That's it, guys. Alright, go back. So, um, let's go and do this, guys. I want to see what, how much this actually is. Let's see this. Um, let's go to um, US to ADE. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter if it's not 100%. Now, how much was it? 688. Well, no. Where is it? There it is. 600 and not. So 700. Let's just put it at 700. So it's a seven hundred dollar. So what's that to Australian? That is no, no, that can't be right, guys. Is that I don't, I no, no, that can't be right. That will make the game, no, the console, 
a thousand friggin' dollars at least. One grand. That's got damn expensive. Um, I don't know where on earth we're going to buy that. Now, let's check um, my local EB Games because they generally sell it. I'm um, hoping it was just an accident. It might be cheaper. Uh, okay, here we go. 7th of November, blah, 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 and uh, no price. Okay, let's go here. Uh, I'm hoping it's a price, guys. <laughs> it's got to be a price. Um, the games are expensive, but it doesn't really matter. The games are always expensive. Um, is that it? There's no price in the PlayStation. That's garbage. I mean, we've got the PlayStation 5. We don't have any prices on the PlayStation Pro. All right, let's see if we can get it, guys. I want to see how much it is in Australia, so. Yiggle, here we come. When it wants to load, all right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Trust my um, the past game thingy. Always has the good best um news for games, at least in Australia. I'm hoping um this doesn't take long. Um, fucking taking forever, isn't it? So yeah, that presentation wasn't too bad. I mean, I was a bit more dumbed down for the mass people. Um, it's not loading at all. I hate when it does that. All right, we'll see if we can just ro load that website. It's fucking useless. All right, let's see if we can get to the web. Okay, the website works fine. What does it? Maybe it's down. Probably because everyone's going on there, so everyone's seen the price and looking at it, and it's like, yeah, can't be reached. All right, it's fine. We'll just ignore that for a moment. PlayStation 5 pro -y. The price in Australia, we just won't worry about that one. That was a high. What the shit? Sorry, guys. I... Now, this is new. I hope this is confirmed. This is Reddit, after all. Reddit's not usually the best place for these things. But if this is true, PlayStation 5 Pro is going to cost $1,200. And makes things worse. The stand is not included, and neither is the disk drive. So it's basically a digital. Only at the moment, unless you get the disk drive. So for twelve hundred dollars, you're just getting the console. That's it. You got to buy the stands and disk drive separately, guys. This is a monster. I mean, it's terrible pricing. Now I'm hoping this is true. Um, relatively not true. This is not worth the money, guys. Sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Trying to look for something in Australia. There we go. Nope, gone to this. It looks like it's twelve hundred dollars. Twelve fucking hundred dollars. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm swearing a bit, but friggin' hell. Twelve hundred dollars for a friggin' console. Man, I would never. I don't know. See, his thing about me, guys. I would never buy a console for over a grand, unless it becomes uniform, like we say Xbox and and two of them do it. Then okay, maybe I'll consider it. Here's the thing, the Xbox is only like, what, $800? Was it? $700? I don't even know. Shows you how intact I am with technology at the moment. Now, let me check again. I, why is the website running like a piece of shit? Here we go. Um, okay. uh, loading, loading. Why can't things load fast, guys? And I'll tell you the reason. I'm uploading, that's why. I'm uploading to YouTube, so it's going to take forever for the upload. So that's why it's running a bit slowy. Um, yeah, 700. Okay, 900. What the hell? Oh, that's a two terabyte one. Oh, it's not bad, but I'm not. It's a Jew out and in. 
Shit, it's not even that far away. It's next month. You know what? Okay. Maybe. I mean, it's $999. I mean, that's a two terabyte pad boy, so that's probably why. Even so, would I waste money buying another console just because it's got a little bit of memory? No, I don't think it's worth it. I better off just going down to the shop and buying an external hard drive. I mean, it requires a bit of mucking around, but yeah, two terabytes is not going to matter too much. Especially if you've got Game Pass, so it's just going to run out. So yeah, um, I'm a bit disappointed. So that's how much... Uh, so it's wipe out that one. So it's about yeah, seven hundred dollars, seven hundred twenty, eight hundred. Okay, eight hundred dollars. It's on special. Of course, it's on special. It's always pretty on special. And that's for the X, um, Series X, I believe. Series uh, S is much cheaper, five hundred. Yeah, but that's more realistic. Uh that's not too. Eight hundred dollars is probably a bit steep considering. Oh, but then again, it is a hardware upgrade and all that. So no, it's probably about right. Eight hundred dollars. Still a little expensive, but you gotta think of this. The PlayStation 5 Pro is four hundred dollars more. Four hundred dollars more. And I don't even know if it's got a bigger hard drive. I don't even think it does. I think it's exactly the same. So personally if I was buying a new Xbox or something, guys, go for that one. That one will be worth it. The extra two terabyte will probably help out. I mean, it's an extra two hundred dollars, so will an extra two hundred dollars be worth it? Probably not, but it's internal and all that, so meh, it's not too bad. Anyway, we're not talking about Xbox, we're for PlayStation. Um, don't even know, does it even have any information on it at all? Like hard drive? I mean, the hard drive's, okay, it's nice that it's fast, but it doesn't tell me any details on it. All right, blah, 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 blah stop shop now. No, I don't care about your PlayStation. Does not have any information on it at all? Uh-huh, or is it down here? No, it won't be down here. Oh, I mean, that's the PlayStation. What? PlayStation 5, 4. What's the way give a shit about that? Okay, um. Is that worth it? $1,200 for 4 gigabyte SSD. Is that worth it? No, I don't think so. Personally, I think you'll get better hard, dri hard drives off of a normal computer shop, but I don't know if they work in the console. They might be one of those things where they have to require a certain brand. I mean, that really sucks when they do it like that. But I don't, I don't think PlayStation's like that. Microsoft, I know they are. I don't give a shit what anyone says, guys. Microsoft's a bad company when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, there's no other information on that. So, let's find out. Well, at least now that we know it's ours, what's in it 100%? Now that we should have information on about hardware and the hard drive. Like I said, guys, just give it a minute. It takes a while to load on uploading. It just takes forever. So, yeah, I'm very disappointed in that, guys. $1,200. I mean, what is this? Oh, for God's sakes. Sorry, guys. The internet's running like a piece of shit, like it always does. We'll try, we'll try this one. Um, let's do this one window. Um, bring that over. Oh. So, guys. The internet's running like a dog. So, what's that? Fire place, uh, PlayStation 5 Pro. And I'm hoping it's a decent hard drive. Mm -hmm, don't care, don't care, don't care. I'm talking about hard drive space. All right. IGN's pretty reliable. Am I happy about this? No, guys. Twelve hundred dollars for PlayStation Five Pro. I mean, seriously. Anyone think they're gonna buy this? I mean, it's a bit of an upgrade, upgrade, but it's not friggin'. It's not a new console. It's not like a PlayStation Six or something. Um, yeah, guys. So, no, I wish the was running a bit more reliable. Sorry, guys. I probably should have done this before I uploaded. Blah 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 blah. Um, look at my hard drive. Doesn't look like it. Based on what I read and what they said in the keynote or showcase or whatever you want to call it, didn't say anything about upgrading the hard drive. I just talked about AI, graphics upgrade, and things like that. Okay, oh, here we go.
Oh yeah, okay. So let's assume that the hard drive is exactly the same as the PlayStation 5. I don't even know if we put what a terabyte of hard drive space. I'm like that. I don't think it's worth it, guys. That's my conclusion. I really don't think it's worth it. Now it's up to you guys if you're gonna buy it or not. I'm not gonna tell you what to do and all anything like that, but my recommendation of it cover. Come and see it. Give me a second. All right. All right. Now I can't even say it. Anyway, guys, I don't recommend it. Oh, there we go. Now, recommendation. I can't even say it. It's weird. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there must be a word in there I just can't get out of my mouth today. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend it, guys. It's not worth it. I don't think it is. $400 extra? No, wait a minute. I didn't even know what the fucking PlayStation 5 was. I did see it on eBay Games, but I didn't pay attention. But yeah, I don't think it's that much. About seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, something like that. So it's what, it's another four hundred or five hundred dollars. Um, yeah, not worth it. It's garbage. It's a waste of money. So that's not my opinion, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think. If it's a worth console or not, I don't think it is. But I'm a tired ass, so maybe that's what it is. But saying that, if you get, yes, you haven't got a PlayStation Five, it might be worth it. Well, I don't have a PlayStation Five, so yeah, maybe when it's on special or something, I'll get it. But not what twelve hundred dollars. Cheers, guys.